guys, a terrible, terrible thing happened in the lower garden. The squash tipped over and broke. Look at that, no! And it has this beautiful patty pan squash on it. Look at that. I'm gonna see if I can sit it up, but I think this is gonna die. I did bring out more seeds, but let's try to save it. Okay, I took a tomato, one of these tall tomato sticks, and I wedged it up against this trellis that um, these cucumbers are climbing on. They're beautiful, by the way. And I'm hoping that that will be enough to hold it up. I'm gonna harvest this squash just to take the load off. Man, so beautiful, so beautiful. So I harvested quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this squash. Because once it's off, then the rest can grow. Ooh, look at that. And I harvested some over here on the ground. These came from these little small plants. Everything got dry. And this is a gray griller squash, but I didn't leave it on there long enough to get gray because it's big already. But that's a pretty nice little harvest. This squash is only 50 days to harvest. So I have hope that we'll still get some squash. I am going to relocate this cutting celery upstairs plant I was going to throw away but it started producing again so I'm just gonna keep harvesting if it's gonna make beans I'm gonna eat beans harvesting beans off of it look at that wow it's just doing what it wants to it's got several cucumbers hanging off of it that's the lemon boy my favorite cucumber I thought this one was gonna die, but it's kicking again. It's got some cucumbers. Everything looks good here. I decided to pull this potato plant because it was broken and starting to die. And I have a couple of new potatoes, so that's fantastic. Okay, what I am gonna plant right here is more patty pan squash because they're beautiful. And I really want to make sure that I don't miss out on those. Okay, I just sowed um, a patty pan squash in here. And again, that's this variety. And I think I just found this at like uh, Tractor Supply. I, ha I have dirty hands. I do not use gloves. So if dirty hands grosses you out, sorry. Nah. If you want a first time citrus tree, I would tell you, get a Calmondon. I don't know if you can see how many little Calmondons are here. It's a citrus tree, it's very tart. I'm gonna show you the size of the tree. These are all the ones I pulled off. This is the little tree right here. This tree is probably about, uh, maybe two, 30, I don't know if it's 36 inches tall or not, it might be maybe three feet, but it was full of Calmondans. Now, when you have these smaller trees that have been grown on older rootstocks, you can see the rootstock the tree was grafted onto, they think that they're old and that they can just produce as much as a grown tree. They can't, they don't have enough energy. I fertilize them really well, but the responsible thing to do is to get in and pluck the fruit off so that the tree doesn't use up all its energy and next year it won't fruit or it will die. So you have to use a lot of discipline and restraint. It was tempting to leave all this fruit on and let it all grow and have all these Calmondans. But then next year I wouldn't have any fruit and that wouldn't be very nice. 
so the responsible thing is just to cut my losses and to harvest another squash and it is the cue ball squash and i am really excited look at it wow oh my gosh look at this look at this squash i'm gonna go ahead and harvest it I think it could have stayed on a little bit longer, but look at that cue ball squash. And I have more growing. I don't know if you can see that one. Guys, these herbs are just out of control and I'm going to harvest them quite a bit because they are everywhere. They look fantastic, but this is crazy. So. This is a bunch of thyme. It is orange thyme, and I'm just gonna give it a good haircut. It already had undergrowth starting. Oh, I wish you could smell it. This over here is golden lemon thyme. And this will make some nice teas. We'll come back. Oh man, that smells creamy. It smells like lemons and like a custard or a cream. All right, guys. I know you remember how much used to be out here. I'm gonna sit down. Whew, we had a lot out here. And honestly, guys, I had so much on this deck that it just became um, unbearable. It was just too much. Um, less is more, and I learned that the hard way. So I know it's weird because I'm trying to figure out where to look. I'm trying to look at the camera, but it's weird. Ah! But anyway, less is more out here. And it just gave me back the peace that I so enjoy. So I want you guys to just enjoy it with me and take it in. I don't think I told you guys that this tall plant is turmeric and the smaller green shoots coming up are ginger. The ginger, I simply went to Aldi and purchased. I soaked it for several days and then I planted it. Now it has taken it a month to come up, but I'm gonna have ginger and turmeric in the same wide pot. You can actually see a bit of the turmeric right here. I'm just gonna cover it back up. I have cleared the pots that were in front of the garden beds and the strawberry Aldi hack um, vertical planters were sitting right here and now they have moved out to be in front of the two end Keter raised bed gardens. The green stalk is rollable, but I just put it there for now because I want to be able to look out of my window and just take in the views and the sunsets. But I definitely like this setup better. It's more airy, it's clean. I can get the shop back out to clean each pen. I will be making some more aesthetic upgrades out here and you'll see that coming up. To say early on with the garden, I said that I wouldn't buy the Azure Standard Starts again because they were taking so long to grow and I thought they were stunted. Um, I think they were just waiting on their time because as you can see now, they are not having a problem growing. I'm gonna stand by them so you can see just how tall they are. I 
I don't think you guys can see the top of the stake, but this thing is, oh, probably six inches taller than me. And so they have really, really done well. Know that I will be buying them again because these tomatoes, these are the striped Roman tomatoes by Azure Standard. And you can already see the stripes coming that are on the green plant tomato. So I can only imagine how these will look, will look when they get ripe. And these are some good size and they are a hybrid. So they are like the shape of a Roman and the density, but the in, they are indeterminate and will keep going all summer. Unlike a Roman, which the Roman that was in, remember I had the big black pot here, the Roman that was in that, I just got rid of it. Um, it was diseased and it wasn't gonna produce anymore. I pulled the tomatoes green and I'll let them countertop ripen because I just wanted the space back. And I'm still gonna put another bed back there um, but that doesn't affect the visual space. The visual space I was wanting was here. And it was just too crowded with so many pots. So this is probably, if I add anything else, it will be other vertical planters, which I can put here and still maintain open space. Excuse me. Okay, y'all, it is obscenely hot outside, so we are going to do a quick DIY. I received this awesome fruit and nut board for my birthday, and when I got it, I thought, oh my gosh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I love dried fruit and nuts, but also this can be reused, not just as a flat tray, but as something we can mount on the wall, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I'm thinking I'm going to use this for is a wall mount quail egg holder. And I'm not sure how many eggs I will be able to put in it, but I'm hoping that I can sit, I don't wanna drop this egg. You know what, let me get some of the blown out eggs. I like to use these eggshells for decor, so I blow them out. And to do that, you just put a hole in, there's a hole right there and another hole, I can't find the other one, but you put two holes, there's the other hole, you put two holes in the egg and you blow through this one and through this one, the, the contents of the egg comes out. And I just use them as bowl fillers. So I'm gonna use these and yes, that's gonna be perfect. So right now, the way I have my quail egg set up is on the counter. And this is fine, but it does take up counter space and they can be knocked off. If I use this and wall mount this, then I will gain 28 spaces for quail eggs. Okay, so to do this craft, you have to put a hole for the quail egg to sit in or else it's just gonna roll out. So now I have to figure out if I need to use a three quarter inch paddle bit or a one half inch paddle bit. Three quarter bit is gonna be perfect for multiple egg sizes. So I think the three quarter bit is gonna work because the smaller egg fits and even the larger egg fits and there's not much movement. Good. 
so far I've succeeded in tearing two holes <laughs> into this, but they do work. So I'm gonna try, instead of going from the bottom, to go through the top because I want it to hang like this. So I'm gonna try to go this way instead of going this way. Okay, we got a hot mess, but I'm gonna keep going because I'm at the point of no return anyway. Okay guys, I have never butchered a project so much in my life, but I'm going to E600 glue it back together and it does work despite how terrible it looks. Okay, I butchered this thing badly and I've made a mess also, but this, what I didn't realize is this wood is not solid pieces. It is just like scrap wood pieces um, making this tray. Um, I don't know what you call it exactly. Pro not particle board, but something like it, where it's not solid wood, it's different pieces of wood put together to form something. And so that's why uh, this came apart like this. What I think I'm gonna do is use some of this papyrus paper because it has great texture to go across the front of the box. Okay guys, I bet you probably didn't think that my little quail egg holder was going to turn out to be anything. And I didn't either, but here it is. So I used everything from the farm. These are corn husks from the corn that I grew. Dried flowers. And of course, those are quail eggs. Y'all, we had one of the quail pass away. I don't know what got her. I don't know if it was the heat or age, but we're down to five in this pen. So I bought this back bed on Facebook Marketplace someone had gotten it they only had it since april i saw a picture of what they had in it they had what looked like a roma tomato and something else um the woman she was awesome she was pregnant so i don't know if she gave up on this because she's pregnant you know and it's hot or sometimes people start in the garden you know it's difficult and sometimes you have to troubleshoot it and people give up but I'm thankful to have gotten this bed um, for half of what I paid for this one. So, Guys, I always apologize when I'm digging in the dirt because, um, you know, I know some people don't like to see dirty nails. But there is a specific um, bacteria that is found in soil that is helpful with, um, it, with uh, mood and is an antidepressant so i'm gonna drop the name of that and just a little bit of the findings i found about just getting your hands in the dirt i never use gloves i i only use them if i'm pulling weeds but just getting my hands in the garden soil is something i love to do and i found out why so i'm gonna put the name of that bacteria on the screen i'm not gonna try to pronounce it I have been waiting to get this garden bed because I want to do a three sisters back here. I have some asparagus beans that I have soaked overnight and these I'm going to plant in the back so that they will cascade over because these vines can get up to 12 feet long. I'm going to plant some dwarf blue jade sweet corn and I have been waiting to put 
Jack B. Little to the test. I'm gonna fill this pot up. I'm gonna sit it up against the fence and we're gonna grow some beans. All right, I have two beans left in the cup that I soaked and I am just going to go ahead and go for it and just plant a ton of beans in this pot and then I'm gonna get my gloves on and I'm gonna weed that grass up. Okay, thank you.
this place is absolutely amazing. I'm going to the basement, which I don't know if I should have went to the basement because it had a lock on the upper door, so maybe I should have been more careful. Ooh, that's pretty back there. That. And he found goodies because stuff down here with the red X is clearanced out. So I'm already seeing some things. Now what I'm looking for is something to go on the wall. That's Mexican. Something to go on the wall by where we mounted the quail egg holder. down here I guess I shouldn't have been worried oh that's pretty these fine pieces that I can't fit in my vehicle love that piece but there's no way I can fit it in my vehicle it's massive it's I can't even do it justice well you can see that armoire and how big that piece is. Thank you for traveling with us today. Please be sure to like if you liked it, subscribe, and keep growing with us. Until next time, the Lord bless and keep you and make his face shine upon you. Somebody laid an egg.